Hey guys, I'm Mel and in this video I'm going to share my top 10 tips for visiting Alton Towers and making the most for your visit to the theme park. So keep watching. Since my recent visit to Alton Towers with a two day pass, I've learned some very handy and useful tips and tricks and now I want to share them with you. If you are interested in learning exactly how much I spent during my three day, two night trip to Alton Towers, I will link my blog post below. So let's jump into the tips. Tip number one is to bring your own water bottle. I'm talking a collapsible water pouch that you can fold up and stick in your zip pocket or, you know, a plastic bottle that you don't mind bunging into the little cubby holes at every ride. Bottled water at the park is so incredibly expensive. It's probably around three pounds per bottle. So having a refillable container is really ideal. You'll be able to use the free water dispensers dotted all around the park whenever you get thirsty and it's just a great way to save money. And of course, it is a wonderful sustainable alternative to continually buying plastic water bottles. Step two is bring your own snacks and lunch. Alton Towers is a theme park, it is a resort, so of course the food is going to be expensive. Food costs are going to rack up so quickly, so you really want to make sure you are stocking up on your snacks in advance. The next time I go to Alton Towers I will be packing my own sandwiches, cereal bars and fruit. Especially if you get hangry like I do, then having those snacks is really important. If you are vegan, gluten-free, any of that stuff, have any dietary requirements, it's going to be very difficult for you to find food. Even if you want to have something like fresh strawberries, it is always going to be served with chocolate syrup and things like that. So you need to make sure that you are catering to your own diet. There is an Asda superstore very nearby, only about 10 minutes away, and you can stock up on things like meal deals where you get a sandwich, snack, and a drink for like three quid. Most rides have a compartment you can stash your bag in, like a ride cage. So just pop it in there and your snacks will be safe. Tip number three is wear clothes with zip pockets. It's really really important that you have zip pockets if you do not want to be stashing your valuables in the ride cages. The inner lining of my coats all have an in a zip pocket for me to put my mobile phone in, my debit card, my keys, whatever else. All the valuables stay with me. And it's important that you have zip pockets because when you are dashing on a ride at like 40 miles per hour, it's so easy for things to fall out of your pocket. And you never want that to happen to you. So always make sure you've got zip pockets. There are storage lockers all around the park for you to put your bags in and so on and so forth. But I personally don't feel that you need them unless of course you are a family and you need to bring a lot of things like diapers, snacks, etc but it means you'll always be tied to walking back to that particular locker location. So zip pockets, I feel, are your best friends. My fourth tip is invest in express parking well in advance of your trip. Oh my gosh, what a lifesaver it was. If you're gonna invest in a day trip or a multiple day trip to Alton Towers, you may as well make it as easy breezy as possible to just park up the car, shut the door and walk into the park. So express parking for me cost £18 when we bought it online. I definitely recommend paying £12 extra for the express parking as opposed to just £6 for standard car parking because when you pay the £6 to go into standard car parking you still have to queue up with everyone else to queue for the train and get yourself to the actual park. The monorail which is the free transit train that takes you from the car park to the park entrance is very cramped rowdy and it will eat up at least 40 minutes of your time from queuing to boarding to getting off at the park entrance especially post covid where everyone is concerned about social distancing with express parking we sailed into a bay right next to the park entrance we shut the door up down there and that was that we were in alton towers ready to rock and roll less than five minutes tip number five is of course get there as early as possible as I said before, if you want to game the system and smash the best rides as quickly as possible, then you want to get there as early as possible. You want to avoid the monorail at all costs. When you board the monorail with everyone else, it means you're only as fast or slow as everyone else is on that train. So once you arrive at the park, then you're going to be arriving with people and that is immediate queues. The rides open at 10 a.m. but Alton Towers let us into the park at 9.15 a.m. I know, we were very keen. But we wanted to do our first day properly and then chill out on the second day after we'd done all the rides. We went in at 9.15 and we headed straight for Oblivion because we knew everyone would probably be queuing for Wickerman. So we went to Oblivion first, we stood there ready to go, super easy breezy, first in line by 9.30. This was all down to arriving at 9am on the dot, getting on the express parking and having a clear plan for which rides we wanted to attack first. 
My sixth tip is head straight for the biggest rides first or the rides that you want to ride first thing in the morning because that is your best window for getting on, having a great seat and having a great time without having to queue for ages and ages. Make sure you head to the rides that you want to get on first just in case they are randomly closed for operations or for weather issues. Queues are still very low first thing in the morning, or at least they are in off-peak times like May, when it's not half term or school holidays. On our first day, which was an empty and rainy Thursday morning, we were able to ride four roller coasters before 11.30 a.m., which were Oblivion, Smiler, Rita, and 13. The Smiler made me so sick, by the way, and I will not be getting on that again. The twists and turns, I'm gonna leave that to the teenagers because I felt nauseous. Anyhow, the rides with the biggest hype, obviously, were the Smiler and Wicker Man, which was amazing, rode it about four times. If you are planning to stay at the resort overnight, my seventh tip is look elsewhere for cheaper accommodation before committing to an Alton Towers resort. If you are staying overnight, it is going to eat up your budget staying at Alton Towers resort. You can check out booking.com, Airbnb, all of those platforms. This is because the Alton Tower Resort hotels are extremely expensive. Even with the cheapest lodge option, which is the star casing pods, does not give you a toilet in your room. That is a non-negotiable for me. I need a toilet in my hotel room if I am going to go anywhere in the world. I guess that caters to people with a lower budget, teenagers, people who don't mind leaving their hotel room and going to a toilet. But bear in mind, if it is super cold, rainy, drizzly, classic British weather, when you're warm and cozy in your pyjamas, are you gonna wanna open the door and share the toilet with Fred? from down the road? No. So I would shop around for a good B&B or hotel or Airbnb that is within driving distance of Alton Towers. Tip number eight is if you are not planning to take your own selfies and you love having a ride photo and things like that, where you're like, Ooh! invest in the Alton Towers digital photo app rather than paying for printed photos. We got really mugged off at the Alton Towers Park entrance gates because we invested in a 20 pound voucher, which is meant to give you four photos printed before later entering the park, getting on the rides and realizing not only that we had to keep our masks on the entire time, thus hiding our faces, but also they didn't have printing facilities available for things like key rings, key chains, magnets, mugs, whatever. But if you get the digital photo app, of course you can split the cost with your friends or whoever you're riding with. And I think it works out as a much better investment overall than the 20 pound voucher for a printed photo, which it feels like is becoming obsolete. Tip number nine is bring a parka or a poncho to Alton Towers. You're probably gonna get wet at Alton Towers because whether it's raining or you're going on the River Rapids ride, having a waterproof jacket is really going to sort you out. Always make sure you have prepared yourself with a parka or poncho for those drizzly showers because there's nothing more miserable than sitting on a ride soaking wet or being on a roller coaster while rain pounds you and then going home and realizing you are sick. Make sure your parka or your poncho is long enough to cover your butt because again, there is nothing more miserable than sitting around with a soggy bottom, especially if you are wearing heavy jeans, speaking from experience. Of course, the heat drying machines for those rides cost two pounds a minute. So stay dry, stay warm. If you wanna see the parka and poncho links that I use, check out the below description. Tip number 10 is book your Alton Towers trip outside of a holiday or peak season, ideally between Monday and Thursday. Why? Because you will 100% have the best time on a weekday when the crowds are off peak, when there are less people visiting the park, and when you are likely to not get backed up, getting caught in crowds for like 40 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour at a time. You will have a better chance of walking straight onto rides without needing to queue. You've spent so much money to go to Alton Towers to ride rides, so why would you not want to ride rides, right? Ride, 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 right. Right. So if you game the system by not only going on an off-peak weekday, but also combining that with express parking and arriving early, oh my goodness, you are going to smash your time at Alton Towers. If you've made it this far, I have a bonus tip number 11, which is download the Alton Towers app. You will have all the ride queue times in the palm of your hand. You will have a map to get around the park very quickly and easily. You can see what food stands and drink stands are close to you. You can see what rides are closed. The location-based map tracker can actually provide you routes from wherever you are to get to whatever ride you wanna go on next. So it's a very handy little pocket pal to have on your mobile phone. 
So to find out how much I actually spent at Alton Towers for a two day trip, you can check out my blog post, which has a breakdown of all the different costs and things like that. You can also find out the pros and cons of Alton Towers, what I thought about each ride, which ride I thought was overhyped, and all of that stuff linked in the general description below. Even though some of the rides did feel a little bit tired, even though the amenities on offer were fairly overpriced, I highly recommend visiting Alton Towers theme park at least once, and I hope these tips help you out. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe and if you have any questions you can drop me a comment let me know if you've been to Alton Towers and if you thought Gangster Granny was overhyped and problematic as I did thanks for watching